Welcome everybody In this tutorial we will learn how to use Elixir and the Phoenix framework to create a counter without JavaScript only using Elixir with the help of Phoenix Live View and we will use Tailwind CSS for the user interface this is the application that we are going to be building you can increase the number, decrease the number or just clear the number back to zero let's start by creating a fresh new phoenix project and your command line here this is the elixir version that i'm going to be using and at the moment of this tutorial the latest version of phoenix is 1.6.6 .6. you can install it uh, like this you can go to the official phoenix installation page so let's start by creating a project by typing this command we will not use the ecto database so let's just say no to that also the get text and no mailer also also we will now need uh, the dashboard the live dashboard so let's just omit that too and immediately just let's just change directory to the new folder or project that is going to be created let's hit enter let's hit enter again and let's just wait until everything is just downloaded and installed okay now that everything is done let's just open up our new project folder and our editor by typing this command now let's add and configure a Tailwind CSS to do that let's go to the package manager website for the Erlang ecosystem and let's search for Tailwind and this is the at the moment of this tutorial this is the latest version so let's just copy this let's get back to our project open the mix configuration file and let's add it to our dependency to our dependencies here let's save it and now let's just go uh, open up a terminal let's move this to a window here and type in this command to fetch our new dependency and also this command to install Tailwind just to make sure that it gets installed let's hit enter let's just wait until everything is just fetched and installed okay well once that is done then let's uh, configure our aliases here for deployment so we need to add this line over here let's save it and then we need to open our config file and add the configuration for Tailwind so this is gonna be the configuration for Tailwind Let's save the file and then open our dev configuration file and let's add this line to our watchers. And let's save it. Now let's add our test by going to our test folder and under the counter web folder 
we're gonna add another folder and we are gonna call it live and inside that live folder let's add a file and we are gonna call it page live test let's hit enter and now let's add our test first we have to add the module We're going to use the counter web concase and let's import finish library test. Now we're going to add these two tests. we are testing the disconnected and connector uh, I'm sorry the disconnected and connected render just to check that the page library is connecting and disconnecting then we're gonna test on that same page that we can increment and decrement by using this function here the render click and then we are going to test the clear event uh, function over here. Now let's save it. And if we go to the terminal and we run the test, it should fail because we haven't done anything yet. It's going to compile everything before it runs a test. Okay, so apparently we, we made a mistake. So let's just go back to our test and I misspelled this word here. Now let's run the test again. As you can see, our tests are failing because we haven't even created the library yet before we go any further let's just update our tailwind version here on our configuration file to the 3.0.12 save it and let's run the test again. It's going to recompile everything. Okay, now it's not complaining about the version of Tailwind. Now let's open our router file so we can add the route to our live view page. Should be under your lib folder on the counter web, and here's our router file. And let's just change the get to live. Let's just remove this and add our library. Let's save it. And now let's go back to our terminal. Let's run our server. Okay, we should be able to access opening this link, the local host, the port 4000. We haven't created the live view page yet so let's go ahead and do that but uh, before we do that let's open up our root uh, template on the templates layout root 
and let's just get rid of this header here save it now let's open our live template and to the container let's add these classes now if we go let's add a folder here the live folder and let's add a file it's gonna be called page live and we're gonna add this module let's save it and now let's add another file this one is going to get called the same but that HTML that HEX and this is going to be our default template okay if we go to our page this is what it should look like let's get back to our editor and let's go to our live view module and let's add the mount function we're not going to use the params or the session we just need the socket let's assign the number that's going to be default to zero let's save it and let's format this document save it again and now if we go to our template here instead of having this zero we're going to use the variable that we assign to the module to the socket Let's save it. If we go to our page, okay, we okay, we have to remove this. Okay, there it is. So now we have that assigned to our socket. Now, right here on our template, to the increment button, we are going to add. this event binding here let's save it and now back in our live view we're gonna use we're gonna add a handle event function so we can handle that event it's gonna be the increment we're not gonna use the params just need the socket I'm gonna say no reply and we're gonna update in our socket the number a variable that we are assigning and we're gonna I'll use this anonymous function to get the value of that number assigned so we can update it and just add one to it let's save it and let's format the document and save it again now if we go to our page and we try to add a number it increases now let's get back to our editor and we're going to add another click binding to our template this time to our decrement button it's going to be the same thing but the name is going to be different 
Let's save it. Now let's get back to our live view. Let's add another handle event function. Again, we're gonna we are not gonna use the params, just a socket. No reply again. Well, this time we're going to update our number that is assigned to our socket here. And this time we're going to use the anonymous function, but with this built in function, Elixir function. It's going to take a range of two numbers and it's going to return the, the maximum number. So the least number is going to be a zero and the maximum is going to be our argument that is going to be the number minus one. So that way it's always going to be zero. It's not going to go past like minus one or any minus number it's just gonna get to zero and gonna stop there now if we go to our page here and we try to decrement on zero it's not gonna do it but if we add a number and then we decrement and now let's get back to our editor the only thing that we have left to add is our clear function Let's add the binding first and we call clear. Save it. Let's get back to our live view. And let's add the function. We clear. I'm not gonna use the params, just the socket. No reply again. And this time we are only going to just assign the variable again, the number variable, to our socket and default to zero. Let's save it. If we go back to our page, we can just increase and just clear it back to zero. Now if we go back to our terminal and we stop the server and we run the test again now they, sh they should pass with no failures. you can see no failures. Let's run it again. There it is. And that's all folks. We went through the simple steps to set up Tailwind CSS with your Phoenix applications and how to handle click events with Phoenix Live View over sockets without the need of using JavaScript code. The JavaScript is handled nicely in the background for us by the live view library thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it if you want to join the elixir army and get more elixir content visit the website elixirprogrammer.com